We are forced to burn our final shield and once again we are relying on the goat to do goat things. 1v3, back out comes Talonflame. We farm up to close to 100 energy. This Hydro Cannon will be taking out Talonflame. What is in the back? In the back is Swampert. We are going to have to get to back-to-back -back Hydro Cannons and outpace the Deoxys. First one gets them low. I cannot mud shot down. I'm forced to throw. We over farm as much as possible. Deep in the red. It's going to be counter versus mud shot. Do we make it? Well, you're going to have to watch the video to find out. So today, we're taking a look at the top-ranked Triple Shadow team on PvPo. A good friend of mine and fellow content creator, Twinstink, did actually notify me that this was the top-ranked Shadow team. So, naturally, I am going to put it to the test. Shout out to Twinstink, link to his YouTube will be in the description down below. So the team is going to be Needle Queen in the lead with Walrein and Swampert in the back. We all know that Walrein and Swampert are both absolutely busted in the Great League. So without any further ado, let's get into the battles. In game one, we pick up a pretty neutral lead against the Bombers though. We're both hitting each other for super effective. And it looks like we're both going for the extra. You can see that Poison Jabs are outweighing the Powder Stones. I get to this Poison Fang and I've got absolutely zero intention now of shielding up this Needle Queen, it's actually a CMP tie, best case for me. Needle Queen can go down, they're at three Powder Snows, they need another four. Before they get to the Energy Ball, they now switch out into Azumarill. So I'm going to just stay in here because Swampert doesn't have the best matchup. Walrein is pretty dominant in this game, and Ice Beam would be resisted. We land the Earthquake, but huge damage. I'm still not going to be shielding up this Walrein as Swampert will be able to take out the Abomasnow Snow with a Hydro Cannon as they are that low. The opponent throws an Ice Beam. What the heck was that play? Absolutely nobody knows. I'm going straight for another Earthquake. The opponent's already down one shield. I highly doubt they're going to shield this up. Walrein is lagging. The big Walrus is saying, see you later, Mighty Blue Mouse, and that is going to be all she wrote. GG's and thanks for playing. Moving on into the next one. We need Nino Queen into Mew. A pretty questionable lead. It's not too bad. Obviously, we can land the Earth Power for big damage, or we can go for the really annoying Nido Queen play of just debuffing the absolute shit out of them. Most Mews do run Surf and Wild Charge, but either way, I've got zero intention of shielding this Surf with non-stab. Will not care, and they actually go for a Flame Charge. They now switch out into a Walrus, so I'm going to debuff it once. I'm going for the debuff here, because then one Earthquake will be enough to KO. I'm now switching out, looking to catch the Icicle Sphere, and we are unsuccessful. Walrein Mirror is pretty fucking garbage. We're both hitting each other for double resisted with the ice type damage however earthquake from this range especially with debuff is going to be more than enough to care does the opponent want to go down a shield no they do not get wrecked walrus back out comes the mew as they dump the energy on a flame charge this icicle sphere will be pressuring a shield the mew does shield it up it looks like they are going to attempt to farm me down and that my friend is a mistake because the walrus is too spammy eat icicle sphere number two the opponent has committed all their shields and now they switch out into Scrafty. This is going to be G to the motherfucking G. This game is over because the GOAT is going to have no problem cleaning this matchup. This is just a pop. Obviously, I'm not going to shield the first one. As I'm not running Earthquake, we are going to have to go for two Hydro Cannons to knock out. This first one will get the opponent really low. And then for no apparent reason whatsoever, we're looking to catch the pop. We do catch the pop successfully. We sneak a poison jab in. We are now going to be able to mud shot down this Scrafty. And we're going to leave with a move. Banked, ready to go for the Mew. So that is a good game. GG's and thanks for playing. Back to back games with a two shield flexing. You love to see it. Moving on into the next battle. We see Pidgeot in the lead. This is kind of neutral. Obviously, these poison fangs and poison jabs are going to really start adding up. The Pidgeot doesn't shield the first one up. We make the second on a CMP tie, so if the opponent throws a Feather Dance, like all Pidgeots do, we call the bait, this Poison Fang will be drawing a shield, and then the Walrus will be able to Powder Snow down. So I'm aggressively swapping into the Walrus, looking to snipe. The opponent switches out really quickly into Talonflame. Up Shields, this isn't a bad matchup for the Walrus, as all this Ice-type damage does hit for neutral. The opponent over farms quite a lot, so we are going to go for this next Icicle Sphere. This will be forcing... The final shields, the opponent is down all shields. I'm now going to call the flame charge bait. The opponent does flame charge. We're hoping to make one more icicle sphere. Unfortunately, we do get farmed down, but up two shields. Swamper is looking pretty prime to sweep. So this will be a flame charge. Again, I am no shield, and apparently I have no intention of shielding in this whole video because I don't really know why. I'm just being a bit of a moron. The opponent is looking to catch the Hydro Cannon. We also look to catch the Flame Charge. 
So we do snipe down that Pidgeot. What is coming back out? Back out comes the Talonflame. That gets farmed down. In the back is Alteria. So perhaps I probably should have shielded something. However, the Goat will always do Goat things. We land the Poison Fang. Now back-to-back -back Hydro Cannon should be enough to knock out this Alteria. Is Swampert as busted as I always say? Let's find out. First Hydro Cannon does do big damage. This second one really needs to knock out as the Mod Shots are doing absolutely nothing but Swampert, as always, does motherfucking goat things and we clean up yet another match with a two shield flex. So far, so good. This team is looking pretty good, as good as the rankings suggest. So we pick up a pretty neutral lead against Drapion. A lot are running Aquatel, so I choose to instant swap into my walls. They go for a crunch, that's huge damage and they get the defense drop, not fantastic. Out comes Metachan. We are going to hopefully make two Articles Spheres. First one does land. Do we make the second? Yes, we do. This should start getting the Metachan into the yellow. Warrain, unfortunately, is going to get taken out. They're actually deep in the red. So we now come in with the Nido Queen. I know that at six, this is just an Ice Punch, which is super effective, but I'm not going to shield it up. We'll now be able to Poison Jab down and threaten the Earth Power on the Drapion. They are five away from the crunch. This opponent throws on four, so this means they are on Aquatel. I am choosing to shield this up as I do want to get a shield back with the potential Earth Power. Does the opponent respect the damage? Yes, they do. So now it's time for Swampert to absolute carry the team. The opponent is building up towards a crunch. I'm going to no shield, hoping for no defense drop. Show me something in the back that Swampert can handle. And it is a Jellison. Holy crap, this stupid fluffy ball is going to absolutely wreck me. Hydro Cannons are resisted, but Swampert does have a high attack. They are going to chunk. However, the opponent should commit to the Hex down. It looks like that is the play the opponent is going for. This is where I really wish I had Earthquake, because another Hydro Cannon isn't going to be enough to KO. We get Hex down. The only wink on here is the Cooler Bubble Beam bait. So I am going to no shield the first one. The opponent does Bubble Beam. We sneak a Poison Jab. We need that to knock out, but you can see the Jellicent is far too healthy. One more Poison Jab still isn't going to be enough, and the opponent makes one more move. So we managed to get hard counted in the back and take our first loss of the video. Moving straight on into the next one. We see the Bear Trap in the lead. We instant swap out into our Walrus, and here comes Defense Deoxys. So Walrain doesn't have a good matchup here. However, Icicle Spheres do really start to add up. We are going to get to two Icicle Spheres before the opponent even throws any energy. So we get the Deoxys into the red. The opponent is over farming. I've got no intentions of shielding this Walrus up because they probably would be able to make back-to-back -back Psycho Boost. They go for a Psycho Boost to take us out. And now I've got a decision to make. I'm going to come in with the Swampert as a debuffed Psycho Boost. Won't do too much and look to commit to the aggressive Mud Shot down. Swampert is now ahead on energy. What is their third? They've got Trevenant. We come back in to Nido Queen, And now from here, we just need to get shields. We're going straight Earth Power. This Earth Power will not be enough to knock out, but will do huge damage. The opponent shields up and now we have a wink on. I'm going to no shield absolutely everything and try and sludge wave that stupid tree in the back. The opponent goes for a really strange bait. We are not going to throw the poison van. We force the opponent to throw again. They throw another rock slide. Can we make the earth power? Yes, we can. Is earth power enough to knock out from this range? I actually go for an undercharge looking to get some mud shots in. So we do CMP tie. However, I think the opponent's switch timer is probably up. Here comes Trevident. Guess what, Trevident? Are you expecting the bait or are you expecting the sludge wave? Get fucking wrecked, Mr. Opponent. No baits on this channel. We mud shot it down completely. We've still got two shields. So we're going to be able to get to back to back hydro cannons against the bear trap. And despite being in a really rough spot, Swampert once again carries this team and we clutch out this game. Swampert is a Trevident counter confirmed. You love to see it. GG's and thanks for playing. And I think that's now eight shields banked for season 12 because the game still runs like absolute fucking garbage. So as always, save them shields because you never know when you're going to need them. Moving on into the next battle, we see another tree in the lead. I am going to call the Seed Bomb Bait. If they Shadow Ball me, I couldn't really give a fuck because we would be able to farm down. They now switch out into Stun Fisk and we come into Swampert. This Hydro Cannon is not going to be enough to knock out, but one Hydro Cannon does put them into Mud Shot farm down range. I am going to shield up the potential EQ, which they throw, and now even if they make another move, it'll just be a rock side. The opponent doesn't make the move, and that Trevident is really low, so we are going to threaten a shield with this Hydro Cannon. It would knock out from this range. The opponent just lets it go, and they've got a Swampert in the back. Well, you might think Swampert with two shields are a pretty good tactic. As you can see in this video, it is a tactic that I've gone for quite a lot. 
However, Swampert, you're not going to appreciate my big fat walrus in the back. The opponent should reach for the top left. They haven't top left yet, but this game is over. I attempt to catch a Hydro Cannon on Nido Queen for no apparent reason. The opponent throws their energy as we are far too healthy, two mud shot down. We're now at the back-to-back -back Icicle Sphere, so I can now shield this move up. I know it is a Hydro Cannon, but either way, we shield it up. This first Icicle Sphere will be getting the shield and the second will knock out. The opponent realizes the game's over and they let it go through. GG's and thanks for playing. Moving on into the next battle, we lead Nido Queen into Umbreon. This is pretty neutral unless they are on Psychic. However, I am going to call that they are not. We time our move correctly to not allow any free Snarl through. Poison Fang doesn't do a lot because Umbreon has about 6 million HP. The opponent farms up to 5. Are they on Psychic? No, they are not. It's just a foul play. So I am going to throw just fast moves, attempting to get the extra. We're unsuccessful. So we are going to burn our first shield here. I am going to throw a Poison Fang and then look to make a dip into my Wall Rain. If the opponent no shields, we'll be able to Icicle Sphere all the way down. It looks like I am attempting to make a catch. Once again, our counter is spot on. We catch a foul play on Walrus. We sneak a Powder Snow. What does the opponent respond with? Here comes Skarmory. This isn't a bad matchup for Walrus. However, down shields, it isn't going to be one that we are going to win. So we land the first Icicle Sphere on a CMP tie. This is pretty great for us. We can now allow Walrus to go down and now we are going to bring in Swampert. So they're five away from the next move. So I'm going to throw on CMP. This will be taking out the Skarmory unless they are willing to shield it up. They aren't willing to give up a shield. They're saving two shields for Venusaur in the back. Holy crap, this game looks over. We bank almost two Hydro Cannon, switch out into Nido Queen. This Poison Fang doesn't get a shield. The Venusaur is choosing to throw. I am going to shield this up as I want the Poison Jab damage. The opponent now switches out into Umbreon. I think that is a mistake because we're now at the second Poison Fang. This Poison Fang will be drawing the first shield from the Venusaur. We are going to get Vine Whip down. However, the opponent throws, throwing the match as we've got Swamp up with almost two moves. We fire a Hydro Cannon immediately. No Vine Whip comes through. We're one away from the next move. One Vine Whip isn't enough to take us out and Swampert is going to clutch up this game. So to be honest, we're really fortunate. The opponent should have went for the Vine Whip farm down. I'm unsure if they would have made it, but either way, that was the win con. We take those. Moving on into the next battle. We pick up a dreadful lead. We say switch into the Walrus. The opponent builds up a boatload of energy and now switch out into Ninetales. So this is most definitely the team run by Zionic. They're going to have Mandibuzz in the back and this is going to be tricky. They correctly shield up an Earthquake. We are going to make one more Earthquake. This will get the opponent fairly low, but obviously it won't knock out as we don't get Stab. It gets Ninetales into the red. We get Farm down. Not fantastic. I'm going to come in with Nido Queen. We Poison Jab down. The opponent doesn't even throw a move and here comes Empoleon. I am just going to let this go. I don't really think we've got a wink on here. I'm going to attempt to use Swampert to close up this match. So we're going to over farm as much as possible. I'm going to shield one move. I'm going to farm up to close to 100 energy and hope that somehow we can win this game. But Mandibuzz is so, so bulky. So I throw just as the fifth waterfall is coming through. A resisted Hydro Cannon will be enough to knock out from this range. However, in the one shield, even ahead in energy, this is a brutal matchup. We're going to need to land three Hydro Cans. We need to get to four, and you can see the Snarls are getting us so low. We are almost at the back-to-back, -back, but we still need three more. This second Hydro Cannon does land. You can see the third one is going to draw the shield, but we are going to get Snarled down. You hate to see it. The opponent does throw some energy. I know they're now at back-to-back -back moves, so I don't bother shielding and concede the match. GG's to the opponent. Moving on into the next battle, we lead Nido Queen into Reggie Steel. As they're now running Zap Cannon, unless they're on Flash Cannon, Zap Cannon, which I doubt, this is a pretty good matchup. We are going straight for the Earth Power. Earth Power should land for decent damage, but not one shot. The opponent actually chooses to shield it up. I am calling that they're on Zap Cannon Focus Blast. They go for a double resisted Zap Cannon. Nido Queen absolutely laughs at this stupid Tin Can and even debuff. This Earth Power still should land for big damage. Earth Power coming through and the opponent double shields. Holy fuck, they love this tin can. Focus Blast will do big damage. That is the move they go for now. So now we aggressively switch out into our Walrus. They are almost in Earthquake range. However, we do get outpaced. I am going to shield up whatever they throw as both moves are super effective. They go for the Focus Blast. So now I'm going to over farm to 100 energy. This Earthquake should almost knock out. Let's see how much damage it does. It does actually knock out. 
Now we've got Walrus against Jellicent. The opponent has no shields. So we're going straight for this Earthquake. Earthquake is going to do big damage as we didn't get debuffed with a Zap Cannon. You can see it lands for huge damage. I've got no intentions of shielding up the Walrus. You are going to need a Shadow Ball to take me out and the opponent goes for a really strange Bubble Beam. I think at this range, a Resisted Icicle Sphere should be enough to knock out. Let's find out. The Gelatin isn't knocked out, but is a CMP tie on the potential Shadow Ball. This time the opponent does go for the Shadow Ball. We can now mud shut down with Swampert and in the back is an Air Slash Tropius. This isn't fantastic. Leaf Blade will absolutely one shot. However, the opponent is quite slow to charge moves. Sludge Wave will land for huge damage. Let's see how much it does. I believe now we should be able to poison jab down. So we look to snipe. We simultaneously KO and Swampert is going to mud shot down the remainder of the team. GG's and thanks for playing. Moving on into the next one, we see Needle Queen into Scrafty. Pretty decent matchup. The opponent switches out into a wall range, so we are going to outpace to this Poison Fang. I'm going to throw a Poison Fang, immediately dip into Walrus, hoping to catch an Icicle Sphere. We're unsuccessful, but once again, this will mean one Earthquake is going to be enough to knock out. The opponent throws an Earthquake. It lands for big damage on us. We are going to be able to outpace to this next Earthquake. This, my friend, is an Icicle Sphere, so I've got absolutely no intention of shielding. It just means we can now guarantee switch advantage. This Earthquake will be enough to knock out. I imagine the opponent will no shield, which they do. We've got hardly any farm on our Walrus. Back out comes Scrafty. And then we are going to come back in with Nido Queen. Nido Queen does take huge damage from foul play. The opponent, let's see what they're going to throw. We are going to go straight for a Poison Fang. And once again, I'm going to no shield. The opponent can foul play me if they wish. I've got no intention of shielding as this Scrafty is now in Hydro Cannon range. They throw the foul play. We both simultaneously swap. And in the back is a Kofa Grigas. We go straight for a Hydro Cannon. Let's see if the opponent is willing to give her their first shield. No, they are not. So now you already know it's time for one of Jamie Finn 1415's aggressive farm downs. We're going to shield up absolutely everything and completely mud shot down this Kofa Grigas. And it is going to go straight psychic. I'm hoping for no defense drop. Let's see. Do we get it? No, we do not. We are going to mud shot down. The opponent still has two shields. We're going to throw this Hydro Cannon immediately. We get a Denial in. Then it's time for one Mud Shot. Throw the next one, which is what we do here. And now we're only, I think, one Mud Shot away from the next one. Is Swampert going to get Mud Shot down? No, we are fucking not. And Swampert clutches up this game. Scrafty, my friend, get wrecked. GG's and thanks for playing. Moving on into the next battle. We need Needle Queen into Talonflame. Not a bad matchup. They will need to Brave Bird to take us out. Needle Queen does survive a Poison Fang. We throw at good time and not allowing any free incinerate. Poison Fang does land and now the opponent is going to have to Brave Bird me. Let's see what the opponent chooses to do. They go for the bird and we can now come in and completely Powder Snow down. The opponent switches out into Deoxys to meet my Walrus. I am going to attempt to catch a Thunderbolt on my Swampert, but the opponent throws after seven. This is going to be a rock slide. Not fantastic. We are going to throw as many Ice Spheres as physically possible and just allow Swampert to try and sweep. Throw one more Powder Snow and an Ice Sphere, and we should CMP tie on the next move. So we should be getting a shield from this Deoxys, but you can see we get some lag and we now fall one Powder Snow short. You fucking hate to see it. Niantic, please. Please fix this game. How frustrating is this game? Well, pretty frustrating. Now we've got Swampert. One versus three. This is a Psycho Boost. I'm not going to shield it up. I'm going to over farm two, five, and then throw the Hydro Cannon. So this is a CMP tie on the next Psycho Boost. This should be taken out the Deoxys. The opponent chooses to shield. Holy crap. We're now forced to shield up a uh, quadruple debuffed Psycho Boost. And now we are going to mud shot down. Back out comes Talonflame. We farm up to 100 energy. This Hydro Cannon is going to be enough to take out the Talonflame. See you later, Kentucky Fried Chicken Bird Death. And in the back is a Swampert. We are going to need two Hydro Cannons to take them out as we're not on Earthquake. So we are going to have to over farm as much as possible. I throw on the fourth mud shot as I have a really low attack Swampert. I'm not going to dare CMP tie him. And now it's going to be a race. Can Swampert make the Hydro Cannon without getting counted down? Of oh, fucking course he can. Hashtag goat doing motherfucking goat things and Swampert cleans up another match in emphatic fashion. Moving on into the next one. We pick up a fairly neutral lead against Alteria. 
We can win this if we're willing to commit shields. However, as we've got War Rain in the back that can hit for double super effective ice type damage, I'm just going to sack the Queen as, let's be honest, it is by far the worst member of the squad. Sky Attack doesn't take us out. Do we make the second Poison Fang? We die with it. Not fantastic, but we should be able to Powder Snow down before they make a move. We do manage to do that. They come in to a counter user, so I am going to throw this Icicle Sphere and look to dip to Swampert. Ice Sphere lands on Scrafty, they switch out into Ferrothorn, and that, my friend, is a match. I want none of the smoke. Shout out Oxford U for that one, and I quit the match. So you can see this team is pretty good. It is the top ranked team on PB Poke. However, I personally think you can modify this team and make it better. I believe Needle Queen is by far the worst member of the squad. I've got a maxed out level 51 Grimer. And I believe that'll be a better replacement. So in the next coming days, after posted summer battle submissions, I will be posting the team with Grimer and let's see how it performs. So if you enjoy the content, I appreciate if you smash that like button. If you're new, consider subscribing. If you like your battles featured on the channel, link is in the description down below. I'd like to say thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.